Welcome to Ignite with Mwangala, with me, Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. Now remember, the objective of this show is to bring you real people with real stories that are meant to leave a lasting and positive impact on your lives. Today, again, we take you all the way to the home of the son of Africa. Now we've all enjoyed his songs. He's done so many songs and has now become an influence in this country. We're talking about no other than Ephraim, the son of Africa. He opened his home to us despite the global pandemic, the COVID-19. He still welcomed us in his home. Ephraim, thank you for opening your doors to your home for us despite the COVID-19. Thank you very much. Mama. I know we're both not wearing masks, but uh, <laughs> we're I keeping a distance. We're keeping a distance. That's right. So um, today we're talking about becoming Ephraim. Mm. Now, from a young boy selling virus uh, merchan merchandise on the street mm. to becoming an influence in the country. Mm. How did that all start? Um, I, I must be very honest with you. Um, I think it has taken the grace of God. Mm. You know, um, I would say like everything that has happened in my life uh, was some sort of a process into what I am seeing today. So um, uh, it has taken the grace of God. You know, um, I must be very honest that it's not by power, not by mighty, but by his spirit. Mm. So uh, even my upbringing was uh, tailored in a way that uh, God wanted me to be what I am today. Wow. Now, take us back to when you were growing up as a young boy. What were your aspirations? What were your dreams? Did you think that one day you'd become what you are today? Um, to be honest, I wanted to become a doctor, a medical doctor, because my mother is a nurse. Mm -hmm. So all, all I knew was just, you know, medicine. And, you know, uh, even up to now, I still, <laughs> mm -hmm. I still try and act like I'm a medical doctor. But anyway, um, God has his own plans, you know, because um, I remember playing keyboards, um, uh, the keyboard in, in, in church, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to sing. I didn't have a good voice. Mm. And um, this, this particular Sunday, my two elder sisters didn't come to church. They, they, I think they were uh, invited to minister elsewhere. So there was no one to minister in church that particular Sunday. So I took up the role, and uh, when I sang, something just told me that this is where you belong. You know, wow. I felt that sense of belonging, like, you know, I think I... Uh, I can do this. So first time you sang and that was home for you? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, my resident pastor then, uh, Reverend Mwansa, uh, uh, actually after the service came to me and he told me, you know, uh, I've never felt the presence of God when you, uh, you know, like this when you started ministering. So I knew from then that, uh, you know, God was actually at work. Oh, wow. Now, wh why, why not secular music? Because a lot of people think, are more drawn to secular music because they want to be popular. Mm. Why, why didn't you go that route? Well, um, when I started, uh, my mother always, I come from a Christian home, so mm. my mother always used to tell us, you know, uh, you may not see the results today, but you know, God has a way of, you know, um, uh, uh, doing it for you. Mm. Uh, and even though the gospel music was not um, uh, very popular then, you know, um, I still held on to those words that, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, even though my friends were doing well, the, the ones who were doing secular music, I, I think I, I already had that backup, you know, from my family to say, mm -hmm. you know, you've got this and God is going to see you through. Mm. Yeah. So you went straight into gospel music? I went music. straight into gospel music, yes. Okay. Now let's talk about your first album, you know, what was that like? Because I know there are young boys <laughs> and girls that are watching now and they're thinking that you just became like that. So um, I started with a song called Na Totala Mayo Andi. Mm -hmm. After I finished my grade 12, I just felt I needed to just, 
appreciate my parents. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I did Natotela um, Mayo. And, mm. and uh, you know, when you're doing a song for your parents, you don't know to, the, to what extent the song will go. Yeah. And um, looking, looking back and uh, seeing how the response was, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I can only say, you know, God had something, you know, something very, very, you know, uh, strong mm. you know, over my life. Something was cooking. Okay, mm. so, Natotela Mayo, and I, I, I can't seem to remember the, the lines. Can you, just two, three, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> Natotela, 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 Mayo andi, Natotela, 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 Mayo andi. Wow. So what inspired you to write that song? Was it for your, for your mother? Well, I, 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 um, I just wanted to appreciate my parents mm -hmm. for what they did, you know, the, the struggles we went through, but they still held us as a family together, you mm. know. So that's, that, that is what kept us, you know, mm -hmm. uh, together. Even up to now, that, that, that is what has kept us as a family. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, talking about family, you've just seen a beautiful little one. Hi, Nana. Come, come. How many kids do you have? I have five kids. Okay. I have five kids, uh, mm -hmm. three girls and two boys. Mm. Um, these are a source of uh, uh, strength mm -hmm. and uh, inspiration, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. I love my kids. I'm a daddy, I'm wow. a daddy, I'm a daddy guy. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Now, striking a balance between becoming, or rather, between what you are now and being a father. Obviously, I know you must be a mentor somewhere. How do you just strike a balance between being a well, family I, man? Well, I, I think I know what time to do what. What mm. you know, uh, I think I've, uh, I've, 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 I've made, I've, I've made it possible for me to uh, not to run, mm -hmm. you know, like endlessly. So mm -hmm. I, I know at what particular time I'm supposed to spend with the family, mm -hmm. and when I'm supposed to be at the studio and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that has helped. That has really helped. And uh, one other thing that has really helped is. Whenever we get a chance to travel together, mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when uh, we, 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 we tend to travel together. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Have you ever thought of, of switching from gospel to secular? No way. No way. <laughs> I, I think this you is what I You passionately say no way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I've never uh -huh. thought like that. Uh -huh. um, I think I'm very content with, uh, uh, with what God uh, has given me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you've never thought of going into secular music? No, I'll never go into secular music. Can you do a song in secular music? I did a song for my wife, Stay With Me. Uh -huh. um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a love song, mm -hmm. but then we've done 10 years in marriage, so I just wanted to honor her and just oh, tell wow. her, you know. Oh, how sweet. Yeah. Okay. I've seen that you've done more than seven albums now. I think you, you've done, done 12. I've done 12, yes. Okay. You sing in English, you sing in Bemba and So I, I sing in different languages. Uh -huh. um, I am one person who is very versatile uh -huh. uh, when it comes to music. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always believed music should uh, reach out mm. to, the, to the global world, you know. So, and, and that's one thing that has, uh, that, 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 that has really helped me. Mm. You know, I, I sing in Swahili, sing in Bemba, mm. sing in Nyanja, yeah. I sing in Portuguese. Mm. You I, do? Yeah, I oh, sing wow. in English as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes we get to travel to places where they don't understand our language yeah. or even English. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so hence the singing in yes. different languages. That's okay, right. so what is what what inspired you? I know you've done some songs in Swahili, and I was thinking, okay, Swahili. What inspired you to do Swahili? Um, out of all the languages. There was a time I went Swahili? to um, to Tanzania, mm -hmm. and um, you know, uh, w w the, the time I went there, everybody was singing in Swahili. Yeah. And I was the only guy who was singing in Bemba, uh -huh. you know. And, and then something within me told me, you know, uh, if you want to reach out, if you want these people to understand your mm -hmm. ministry, you need to translate your songs into Swahili. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that particular time uh, there was a, a very uh, good relationship with, uh, with uh, Tanzania, Tanzania's, uh, uh, one of Tanzania's uh, top gospel singers mm -hmm. by the name of Ensi, Sister Ensi. Mm -hmm. So she helped me translate um, the songs into Swahili. Oh, wow. Yes. And boom, you're singing songs. Yeah, and, uh, and then the, the next thing, I started having shows like three times in, in a year you yeah. know, in big stadiums. Mm, you know, wow. and that's okay. what God can do. Now we are home. We came and that's the time you're just, you know, getting out of bed. And I'm thinking, what is a typical day for Ephraim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Uh, my, my life just revolves around music. Yeah. 
you know, uh, mm. and uh, and um, every time I wake up, I want to sing a new song to God. Mm. Uh, I want to make sure everything is in place. You know, as a family man, you want you need to make sure that you have everything before yeah. before you make any you know er any uh, errands and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Because you're still a dad. Mm. What inspires you to write some of these songs? Do you have a specific time? And I always ask, every time I'm talking to somebody who sings, do you have a specific time that now you have to see it and now you're getting the inspiration, the downloads, I like to call Thank them, you. from God? Or do, does it just happen like that? So um, what happens, uh, most of the time, God gives me songs when we are in worship. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I'll be alone, mm -hmm. maybe in my room. And I'll be on my keyboard, mm -hmm. and I'll just probably come up with uh, maybe a rhythm, and and sometimes things that we go through as mm -hmm. uh, individuals, yeah. we find uh, God drops a song, and that just encourages you and and uh, lifts your spirit. Mm. Maybe sometimes you are just feeling low, yeah. and then God gives you a song, and then suddenly you know your day is brightened. Mm -hmm. You know. Wow. So here's what happened to me this morning. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have a chat. I, I, I call these conversations with Ephraim. So let me look at some of these songs. And I think before the interview, I was telling you, I got stuck to one song, The More You Wait. The more and you I wait. listened to that song, I think, mm. for over an mm. hour. Tell me, uh, what space were you in were you, when you were writing that song? Um, I think uh, I was... Um, you know, I was in a place where I was looking at my friend's success mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and I forgot about my little success that, yeah. you know, that I've blessed so many people, yeah. you know, and um, I was looking at my friends who have now become medical doctors, they're doing well in life and, you know, some of them are into politics and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I forgot about what God was doing in my life. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then the Spirit of God just started ministering to me. He said, the more you wait, the more the glory. I mean, mm. you, you don't want to move at the same pace with another person. Mm. God has a way of doing his own things, yeah. you know. So I will wait on the, I'll wait on the, on the timing of God and, mm. and, and things like that. So I, that's the inspiration behind the song. Wow. That, that song spoke to me. Now, that is my song. I know you, you, you have a number of songs. What is that one song that you always go back to when you feel oh. things are not going the way they're supposed to be going? <laughs> <laughs> that has been my song uh, you know there was a time when i messed up in life uh, and um you know um god gave me that song that song just revived me suddenly i, I stopped about you know i stopped thinking about smoking and drinking mm. and i just wanted to pursue righteousness and, mm. and things like that so i think that for me that's that, that that's the greatest song you wow. Know. Did you ever go through that path of smoking? Yes. Yes. Drinking? I mean I I mean I think I felt I felt like um, I was worthless. I, mm. I felt like you know there was nothing left for me, mm. you know. Um, and and then suddenly, uh, suddenly before I even engaged into smoking and drinking, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the God ministered to me, say, you know what, this suffering is just for a short while. Yeah. This uh, whatever you're going through is just for a phase. Mm. It's not it's not going to last, you know, wow. forever. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at. Ephraim, the son of Africa's drinking and smoking <laughs> and wow, wow, wow. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> I mean how, how did you find yourself there? Well, um, you know, um, I did my first album mm -hmm. and you know, what you do a first album, your name is everywhere and then, yeah. and then you forget about church things and the next thing you're, you're, you're famous, you know, girls are oh, everywhere, wow. yeah. you know, and, and, and things like that. And then you pregnant someone mm -hmm. and uh, you feel now like the whole world has crashed and yeah. there's nowhere to go, mm. you know. But one thing I, I remember, you know, um, uh, God's ministering to me, he says, uh, you, ca you cannot um, cover sin with another sin. So you better, you're better off dealing with it. I mean, I had, I had chances of leaving this country. I had opportunities in South Africa where I did, I, I did some works, but then God told me, go back and correct things, you know. And that's how I came back, I had to just face the, the, the situation, the embarrassment and things like that. And mm. I thank God that my daughter now is uh, 13 years old. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Everything works out for good. Everything works out for good. To them that love that's the right. Lord. That's right, that's right. Okay, now we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we talk about some of the awards that you've won. And we're, talking about, we're going to talk about uh, the, the current project that you're working on. I know you're working on a number of projects, but we're going to talk about your project 2020. We take a short break, and when we come back, we continue talking to Ephraim, the son of Africa.
coronavirus disease, COVID-19 pandemic, has appended lives of children and their families. While the health sector buckles, borders closed, businesses and schools shutter. As COVID-19 spreads, so was misinformation, fueling discrimination and stigma. Let's promote facts over fear. Let's bring out the trustworthy guidance to our parents, caregivers, and educators. Despite what you might think or feel, we are not your enemy. We're asking you to stop, be still, to listen. I stayed at work for you. Please, please, stay home. Be the change. Please, do your best to stay at home. If you must leave your home, please remember to mask up. Keep social distancing of at least one meter and wash your hands often with soap and running water or any alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Welcome back. If you're joining us now, I am talking to Ephraim, the son of Africa. And by the way, he invited us home. Now, we were talking about some of the music or rather mm. the albums that you've done and the current projects that you're working on. But maybe before I talk about the project that you're working on, like I said earlier, I read somewhere where you said that, you know, your, your, your starting off in life was, you know, selling different stuff mm. on the streets of Lusaka. I can't imagine you doing that. Actually, the streets of Kalalushi. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because well, I'm from the Copper Belt. Oh, you're from the yes, Copper Belt. I'm from yes. the Copper Belt, that's right. I, I can't imagine you doing that. Well, um, you know, no, things were not as rosy as they are now. Yeah. Uh, we had to go out there and sell fritters and uh, scones. Mm. Mm. I remember sometimes we would leave like late, you know, waiting for them for for the miners to knock off, and then they would buy scones at the at the, at the bus station. Mm. You know, and um, that was the kind of life that we lived, and we, I I loved it. Oh, I don't wow. regret it at all mm. because that is what. Um, 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 that just brought some sort of humility that, you know, uh, where, wherever life will throw you, you can yeah. survive, yeah. you know, for as long as you are with God, mm. you know. Um, that's why I'm one person who I don't, I, 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 I don't, I, I, I don't worry even if I find myself mm. in a place where uh, it looks hopeless and things like that. I, I always have this hope because uh, that background prepared us, you know, very well. Wow. Is that the reason why you ensure that whatever music you're composing, whatever music you're singing is of hope and, that's, and that's, love? That's right. I mean, God mm. is about hope, mm. you know. Um, God is about love, you mm. know, and that is the reason why I think you cannot do music without giving people hope because mm. that's what they need. You know, wow. they need to know that um, there's this unique love that will carry them through um, uh, every challenge. Mm. Yeah. That is so powerful. I know you are a Christian. I know you believe in God. But what, what keeps you going? What um, keeps you strong? <laughs> what keeps you grounded? Um, the Word of God. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Word of God keeps yeah. me grounded. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and also the company, the kind of company that, you know, we keep, yeah. you know, uh, somehow shapes us. Mm. You know, I, I have friends who rebuke me friends that encourage me in the things of God. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm very one, uh, I'm one very selective person. Mm -hmm. I don't just make everyone uh, a friend. friend. Yeah. Oh, so wow. I, tr I try to, to make sure that I have this circle of friends that uh, love God, mm -hmm. that inspire me to do great things. Powerful. Now, who is your mentor? I'm sure you must be you must have a mentor. Do you have I've, a role I've, model? Yeah, of course I have uh, my mm -hmm. spiritual father, uh -huh. uh, Pastor Nkosan Nchongo. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the way from the U.S. Um, in Washington, D.C. That's mm -hmm. where I spend most of my time mm -hmm. um, uh, just being uh, mentored and, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's one person who has helped me in the things of God. And um, also here in Zambia, I, I do have uh, bishops that s still speak to me and uh, sit me down, like mm -hmm. uh, Bishop Nkata, mm -hmm. Bishop uh, Stephen Nkata from Burning Bush. Mm -hmm. He's one person who actually married us off and... Uh, he, he, from time to time, you know, uh, I sit under him and, you know, just for guidance and, mm. and things like that. Okay. Are you mentoring any young, young boys and girls? So we have something called uh, uh, a House of Worshippers. Yeah. Um, that is where we are trying to mentor some of these great talents mm. that Zambia uh, is about to hear. You oh, know, wow. and uh, those are the guys that um, are helping me, uh, barking me up and uh, doing concerts with. Mm. So that's what we're, we have embarked on now. 
Okay. Now let's look at the uh, um, industry, the music industry in Zambia. Do you think it's where it's supposed to be? Um, I think it, 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 it can be better. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, people have this uh, narrative that uh, music is just, you know, just, just for people who have failed in life yeah. and they're trying to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, that notion should change. You know, mm -hmm. um, music is about people with great talents, people with special abilities that, you know, give hope out there to people that bring joy and things that bring people together mm. and things like, like, like soccer, yeah. you know? Mm. So it's, it's, it's a talent that must be appreciated, must be, um, 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 bought in as, as the government should just buy into this mm. and, because it brings people together, yeah, you know, it, it, it sends out messages out there mm. and, and things like that. Okay, great. Now, son of Africa, where did that name come from? Um, at first, I started. <laughs> I started with uh, son of Kalalushi uh -huh. because I'm from, I'm from Kalalushi, uh -huh. and then and then I graduated son of the Copper Belt. Mm -hmm. I started going to different towns, yeah. and then I started touring Zambia, and uh -huh. I felt, you know, I'm an African, so yeah. um, I think. Um, for for someone to go global, uh -huh. you need to have an identity. Yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a Wakanda uh -huh. child. Oh yeah, son of Africa, mm. going to uh, you know the rest of the world. Wakanda forever, for yeah. sure. <laughs> okay, so now I know we can't we can't we can't talk about you know we can't do the show without you singing. What is that that one song that you're gonna sing for us? Okay, so this yeah. particular song is called. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. There are so many. Am I, am so I many allowed songs. to I know. pick a song? <laughs> uh, oh, I think Umuti Mawand, yeah. Umuti Mawand. Why yeah. Umuti Mawand? Um, actually, it's called Nde, I Need You More. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's very dear to me because uh -huh. uh, I think that song just um, uh, talks about uh, you know, uh, uh, this need for reaching out to God, you know, mm. searching Him and, mm -hmm. you know, seeking Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, would you say God has ever let you down? Has there been a moment in your life that you've thought, oh, God is not answering my prayers? Because now we're in a time where people think that God is not there. If you look at what is happening now, COVID-19 everywhere, you know, the economy is just, you know, misbehaving, I would say. Um, would you say that um, I'll, I'll take you, I'll take like you back to what I said. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe because of my upbringing um, and seeing the lifting of God. So even, even though we have come this far, it has, it has not been through our power mm -hmm. and you know, our ability and our connections. It has been the grace of God. Mm -hmm. It has been God work, working. So why should we feel like God has let us down? You know, even where, where we are going, God mm -hmm. will still carry us through. So wow. for me, that has always been, you know, looking up to God, mm -hmm. regardless of situations. Wow. Have you ever thought of becoming a pastor one day? I am actually a pastor oh, really? in music. Oh, pastor, of course. <laughs> yeah, people pastor call me pastor because mm -hmm. I, I believe I, I, I believe I carry the, I carry the the word of God, mm -hmm. you know, through the music. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean. Do um, we see you starting up a church? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still praying about it, okay. but yeah, we are heading that way. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about your identity. I know this is your identity, the This one. Uh huh. I've, yeah, yeah. I'll give yeah. you some nice photos, actually. Uh -huh. oh, wow. So yeah. Okay. So I started. Um, I started. I started uh, wearing this, like, I think almost 25 years ago. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my grandfather's name was uh, uh, Ephraim, actually, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he used to love. He was a very smart man with yeah. his hearts. And, uh, you know, um, I think as a way of honoring him, uh -huh. I have uh, maintained the, the legacy. Okay. Yeah, so I, I hope to pass it on to my children. Oh, wow. So they can pass on to <laughs> their, their children's children. children. Yeah. Okay, so what do you feel if you're not wearing it? I feel, I don't I feel think, empty. I don't think I've ever seen you. I know, I know, without... I know. But at least you guys are privileged. Oh, when yeah. You, when to you walked home, yeah, yeah. yeah, we saw yeah, you. Yeah. I well, hope we captured those on camera. I hope so. <laughs> for people to see. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to take a short break. When we come back, obviously we go straight to, into into the music. Okay. Muti Mawandi. I think he's, you're gonna do two songs for us because we are home. I'm sure you can okay. even do three. Not we can have our own concert here. Is that That's right? right? That's right. <laughs> okay, so we take a short break. When we come back, uh, Ephraim goes straight into singing one of his very many songs. Don't go away. As frontliners in the battlefield, we choose to rise above COVID-19. Yes, 
We choose to fight and to rise above discrimination and not to succumb to fear. We are now alert and together as one, we are ready to raise our strides of hope. Death might be knocking at the front door, but no mountain is too high, no river too wide, no storm too fierce. Our pain will strengthen us. Fear will drive our faith. Tiende pamozi na mtima umozi. Atuende antomwe amoyomwe. I stayed at work for you. Stay at home for me and be safe. Be that change. Please do your best to stay at home. If you must leave your home, please remember to mask up. Keep social distancing of at least one meter and wash your hands often with soap and running water or any alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Wow, that was beautiful. Do you realize that we just had a mini <laughs> mean concert. concert in your home? In my kitchen. In your kitchen. <laughs> That's right. How often do you do this? Well, uh, uh, this this is a ritual for me. I, I do this uh, once in a while. Mm. Um, uh, I try by all means to, you know, write a song at least every day. Uh -huh. You know, uh, I write a lot of songs for people, so 
also not just my songs but yeah, also for write. other people yeah so is this sometimes turned into your working space yeah yeah i mean sometimes i chop onions and tomatoes here and i chop my keyboard right wow here. now talking about chopping onions and tomatoes i'm sure there's a wife yes what, what, what does a wife think of you as a husband i think uh, we are privileged because you're in my home uh -huh. so i'll, I'll invite uh, where is she come okay <laughs> All right, let me bring my wife. Oh. So, uh, so she can answer that yeah. question for us. I think it's better to hear from, from the madame. Hello. Hi, madame. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us in your home. You're most welcome. He was just, I was just asking him a question on what kind of a husband we think he is. He's a husband, he's a father. And I think you'll be the right person to answer that yes. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I can say, I can write a whole book about how wonderful he is. Okay. I'll just... Uh, to pick a few. Mm -hmm. He's a loving husband, very good with his kids. He loves people. Most of the times he's with like uh -huh. a huge crowd, you know? Yeah. He's a people lover and um, he's a good husband, family man. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that one thing that we don't know about him that many Zambians out there don't know about him? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to cook. He's a good cook. Oh, wow, he can actually cook? He can yeah. cook. He oh, can cook. my God. So what is that one thing that you love about him? I know he's your husband, he's your father to your kids, but what is that one thing that you love about him? He loves God to the bone. Mm. He loves God, like, so, so much. You can't, you can't remove him out of that God-loving picture, you know? It's always there. It's always there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who saw who the first time? How did you meet? How did you meet? Uh -huh. did I you like meet? that you're wearing he red, saw me. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He saw me and he okay. was stalking me. <laughs> uh -huh. Was yeah. he already singing at the time? When... He was, uh -huh. but I didn't know that he was a singer. He was uh -huh. a musician. Uh -huh. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, coming from my background, um, I'm, I'm from an um, SCA background, uh -huh. so most of my songs were in the Pentecostal, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I uh -huh. was more of a... Oh, I am more of a... Um, um, a Gaita, uh -huh. a Gaita band, mm -hmm. yeah, fan, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I didn't know about Ephraim, the musician, the son of Africa. Uh -huh. Yeah, not until later on, later on. Oh, really? Like, oh. That's when you discovered. Yes. Okay. And he doesn't believe it. He, he doesn't believe that I didn't know. To death. <laughs> when he met me. <laughs> I yeah. Like so that. I, I met her at um, on oh, the run. Mm -hmm. I used to buy bread there, mm -hmm. and every time I buy bread, she'd give me a sausage. So, really? Yeah. So, <laughs> was that on purpose? <laughs> no, he he loved the sausages. So uh -huh. I was like, okay, let me bless him. He oh, loves wow. it. He would talk about no, the sausages. But she was very strategic. Uh huh. You think so? N no. <laughs> it didn't even, like, it didn't even occur in my head that there yeah. would be this, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's just out of loving to give. Oh, he loves sausage. Oh, I'll uh -huh. give him and he'll come with his daughter. Oh. So I'd give the daughter sausage and he would also consume. So he loved the sausage. And there so. you are. And there we are. How do you strike a balance between uh, being a wife, especially married to a, a busy man like him, and being a mother of five? How do you strike a balance? So um, when getting into the marriage, I knew his ministry. I knew that he was going to travel a lot. He was going to have lots of concerts, you know. So I just had to adjust. Mm. Yeah. So the goodness is that he makes time for yeah. us. So it's not always like he's he's away, away like he's away. an absent dad or husband. Mm. So and he's we always travel together to fly. <laughs> yes, we travel together. A lot. The whole beauty I like that. Travel, yeah. Now he's a handsome young man. You are um, do you? Does it okay. cross your mind that maybe you know there are so many girls out there? Mm. Does it ever cross your mind that you know he may look elsewhere? He's principled. Okay. He's grounded. Uh -huh. So. I, he doesn't even cross my mind because I know his boundaries. He has boundaries. I he like knows that. that. Okay. Here, I can't cross, uh, you know? He has those boundaries. He knows them. I like that. Yeah. Now, what is your message to the young girls that are watching us now? Daddy, I mean, I like you've been married for 10 years? Daddy. Yeah, we've been married for mm -hmm. 10 years. Like what is that one lesson right. that you can teach the young like girls that are aspiring to get married? Daddy. Prayer is everything yeah. in marriage. Mm -hmm. Your needs have to work. Mm -hmm. You have to cover your family in prayer, so them in prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So prayer is everything. Do you pray together as a family? No, yeah, we do have no, prayers no, all the time. No, devotions. We have evening devotions. Mm. Yeah, we just um, 
teach our kids if they, you know yeah. they have yeah. to learn about these things even when they yeah, have yeah. their own homes so continue with the same tradition uh, so we teach them the word of god the yeah. devotions mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay it, it also helps us as well wow so sometimes you know you get so busy with the uh, other things and then you may you may just forget about the word of god but it just brings us together to bring out the bible and just read read through yeah. okay okay do you have challenges like uh average marriages i'm looking i mean son of africa is he's grounded you're grounded mm-hmm. but i'm sure there's somebody who's watching out there and thinking oh we should, we should, we should, we should, we should. Mm, like it's all rosy, <laughs> like it's all rosy you no know marriage that doesn't have friction yeah you know, at some point you'll yeah. have these frictions yeah i mean we come from different backgrounds mm. we are raised differently we have kind of different beliefs yeah but then um when you get to by slowly but sure you get to know one another and you know the dislikes of your spouse and the likes of the spouse mm. then you just blend it all together then you come out with this beautiful thing but yeah. <laughs> 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 what is that one thing you love about your chick your woman i like mm-hmm. the way he's looking at you like say it mm. yeah can we hear it tell them <laughs> <laughs> tell the uh, world one thing i love about this girl Mm-hmm. is that she's a one loving person. Yeah. I'm a people's person, so yeah. um, sometimes I bring a lot of friends mm-hmm. and uh, everybody at home, yeah. and she has to feed all of us, you know, and things like that. So that's one person, I, that's one thing I love about her. She, she loves people as well. Mm. She, she, um, she loves to cook. She loves uh, the children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she loves me the most. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. So you are because of her, right? I mean, yes, we see yes. the effort because of He who finds a wife, remember that scripture? Yeah. So there's that grace that comes with the marriage through that wife. I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. He wouldn't be him without me. Of course. Yeah. Right. yeah. Vice versa, isn't it? Exactly. Not very true. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. God brings, I think God orchestrates things in a way that is unique. So mm. I think... Her coming into my life has uh, shaped me in some way mm. and has uh, made me into a better person. Likewise. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. That's so powerful. Mm-hmm. What is that one thing that we don't know about the both of you? What's that? That one day... Mm-hmm. It's a secret. That one day, <laughs> one <laughs> day... <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love ministry and um, I'm sure one day we'll have a ministry where because we love people, so ah. I think that, that, that is something that is uh, very dear to us. Yeah. Uh, that we will one day have a ministry. I love uh, that. Know. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's so powerful. Now, Ephraim, if you were on your deathbed and you were given a second chance to leave, what would you do differently? Um, I'd love them to know that uh, uh, I love these guys. I think, that, that, I think that's the most important thing. Mm. Yeah, I think that's one thing that uh, the reason for this life is about love. So uh, me being a part of their lives, I think, is one great thing that God has, you know, blessed you with. Blessed me with. Yeah. Mm. So I, I'd, I'd love them to know that I love them, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, with or without me, God will still look after them, and you take care of them very well. So that's one thing I know for sure. Mm. Yeah. Because some, sometimes people go like, oh, if the husband dies, then things will become, you know, but uh, we, 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 we are people that believes in, in, in the provision and the grace of God. Mm-hmm. So um, even if I, I were to die today, they will still live uh, uh, and uh, have a wonderful life. I love that. Now, you are a power couple. Am I right to call you that? Yes. If what, you said so. <laughs> <laughs> what is your message to um, families that, that are breaking up now, homes that are breaking up now? I think it's important to hold the family together mm. because, I mean, that's what the enemy is after, you know. Um, once this thing is over, uh, you know, uh, it's not just about us. It's mm. about the people that have believed in the gospel, people that have believed in, um, um, in love and things just, you know, uh, looking at us and mm. uh, making us an, as an example. Mm-hmm. So um, there are also kids that kids' lives, lives would be so miserable, you know, yeah. not having a parent. It's, 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 it's one thing, uh, uh, it's, it's one thing losing a parent like, uh, uh, and it's another thing when your parents are alive and they're not together and, you know, they, they, there's always that friction that comes and 
that's why you find some kids are in drugs mm. some of them are uh, do not know uh, um, which route to take because they don't have people that they can look up to mm. so it's it's better it's better to hold a family regardless we, we also have struggles and uh, we have just put it as, as 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 a thing to make it work wow you know that's so sometimes whenever we argued she would just get the keys and lock us in, and throw the keys until we sorted out things. Wow. Yeah, so That's a good strategy. Communication yeah. is important, it you is. know? Yeah. And we've seen a lot of families lose it because, you know, when there's no communication, we actually, there's no marriage there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm sorry. I know you can see. I mean, you, there's no way that you can be married to him and you can't sing. Mm. I'm sure you can sing. <laughs> sing, sing a hymn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The boys, what do you like about mommy and daddy? Mm -hmm. huh? Um, they're strict, uh -huh. and whenever we do something bad, they punish us and correct us. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And for you, uh, that um, they take care of us mm -hmm. and they, they make us go right and they love us. That's very what are you powerful. Gonna do, what are you going to do for us when you grow up? <laughs> Buy for you a lot of us cars and simples. <laughs> but, wow, that's so powerful. I like the power of, of a family. So do you want to become a singer? Mm -hmm. Who wants to become a singer like daddy? Both of both us. us. You both want to become singers? Yes. Oh, wow. And what? And soccer players. That's powerful. Now, there are so many young boys and girls that are watching you back home. What message do you have for them? Um, stay home and stay, stay safe. safe. That's powerful. <laughs> stay home and stay safe. Okay, so what message do you have to many Zambians that are watching us? There's still hope mm -hmm. and uh, we need to just hold on to, to God's word because mm -hmm. God's word will never fail, you know, um, regardless of the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, those uh, who are going through a lot, uh, who are in hospitals and they don't know where to uh, who to run to, to mm -hmm. run to. Mm -hmm. I, I urge them to just stay focused on the Word of God because the Word of God works. Wow, powerful. Mm -hmm. For you, Mama? Yeah, um, just like what he said, there are some times, okay, there are many times that we, we want to give up because maybe something bad has happened in our families or in our lives, so we feel like God is far-fetched and we just feel like there's, there's, there's nothing... Um, or we can't go on because probably the Lord has left us to be by ourselves or anything like that. But then we always have to remember the word of God that he'll always be there. He'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. And despite challenges that we may go through, he's always there to hold us up. Remember uh, Job, he was given or he went through so many trials or troubles and it's just the same with us. He held on to the word of God, even at, at some point he wanted to give up, but then he continued on holding on to God because he's the creator. Mm. He created us and he wouldn't want to see us like suffer. Yes, we may suffer at some point in life, but then still the word of God will still stand and remain the same. Wow, that is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for opening your home to us. 
And we pray that may God continue to protect you mm -hmm. and give you the wisdom that you need. And see you at the top. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. See you at the top. Thank you. <laughs> so there you have it. We were having a mini concert at the home of the Son of Africa, no other than Ephraim. The objective of this show is to bring you real people with real stories that are meant to leave a lasting and positive impact. This has been Mwangala Chakalashi Santos on Ignite with Mwangala. Join me for another exciting episode. The more you wait, the more the glory. Kalalo de la, kalalo de la.